Hello, my name is Elizabeth. I work in the field of child and mental health research and then sometimes also do some global health research and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is inspired by some stuff I was doing at work earlier this week and it's on inter-rater reliability. So inter-rater or measures of inter-rater reliability assess the level of agreement and sometimes consistency between multiple raters on a, a given variable or a given topic. And so I'm going to be covering two today, Cohen's kappa, which is generally used for categorical variables and intra-class coefficient or ICC for short, which is generally used for continuous variables. Yeah, um, I've linked a really good article below by Randy Nathan et al. 2017. It's a really good open source article or resource. Covers uh, how to calculate Cohen's kappa, uh, the different types of kappas they are, depending on the type of variable you've used and the number of graders there are. It also goes over how to calculate uh, ICC. And uh, last, I think it provides some considerations when um, addressing agreement or consistency between multiple raters. Uh, now, Cohen's kappa, or the value kappa, is a value between negative one and positive 101, where zero is agreement by chance and one is perfect agreement, and uh, inter-class coefficient, ICC, is a value between 0 and 1, where 0 0.5 is for reliability, and so you're looking for generally a value between 0 0.75 and 0 0.90, depending on the type of research you're doing. Um, so we're going to go over how to input your data into SPSS, um, so SPSS can read it and analyze it. Um, I'm going to go over a short way and a long way. I've done both, so I can give you the kind of pros and cons of both. Um, and generally, I like to use health, health-related examples or psychology-related examples because that's what I did my grad school and uh, undergrad in. But today's going to be a little bit different. Main reason being that um, I want to show that there are different applications of this, this stuff. Um, statistical principles are just that, they're principles and they can be used in like a variety of different contexts, right? So today's example is going to be on, just on The Bachelor, yes, The Bachelor on ABC. Um, my brother and I watch the show quite problematically and um, we comment on it on our Instagram so that's always fun. Uh, but suppose that we wanted to, or I, wanted to determine the level of reliability um, that my brother and I have when we're rating the dates based on these variables. I don't remember them, so I'm just going to put them here. Um, and it's going to be a good mix of interclass coefficients, uh, Cohen's kappa, and then a weighted kappa. And weighted kappas are good for like your scale. So for example, when you have like somewhat likely, likely, not likely, those type of things. So with that said, let's head on over to the tutorial. So I have two different data sets here. They're exactly the same, contain the exact virtually the exact same variable except for this one. And then I'm going to show you why that variable is there in a second. Um, so in this uh, data set, um, all the contestant IDs are here, but every uh, variable and rater are grouped together and every variable and rater are grouped in one column. In uh, this data set, every um, rater is given a line, but every rating for every variable is on one row, if that makes any sense. So um, in this format, um, EL is here, rows or home is here, but this one has grouped the rater and the variable together. So you can change it from this format to this one. However, um, a little cautionary tale, um, if there are variables that the raters have rated the exact same, they're, they've given the same values for the ratings, uh, SPSS will not transfer it over. Um, so you won't, won't see, for example, example variable LL, example variable EL here. And I'll show you that just in a second. So this is the variable, this is the data set, pardon me, where every um, every rating is on a row. 
So we can change this from, from this. I think I believe this is long format. We can't change this from long to wide. Uh, so we do that by going to data, uh, going to restructure, clicking the second option, which restructures the cases into variables. We click next. And the identifier variable is sometimes the name or the contest the ID. So it's just usually the ID. So here is the contestant ID. And the index variable is looking for the variable that contains the rater or the distinction between the raters, which is rater initial. Um, and you click next, next. Um, and you, you want to keep it uh, grouped by original, original variable. Click next and click finish. Okay. And this is how it looks like. So as you can see, this is the same exact data set now with the distinction of the, this, the example variable. And again, remember I said that if the raters have given the same value for, for all the IDs or all the individuals that they're rating, uh, SPSS is going to read it as a constant and it's not going to provide a, um, a, uh, a different column for this. So uh, this is ideally the way that you want to have your data structured so that you don't run into situations where the, rate, the raters have given uh, each ID the same rating and then um, you don't have any statistics for those. Okay, so this is the data set that we have here the contestant IDs, and then each rater's rating for each of the contestants is in a column. So for Cohen's Kappa, you would go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then you'd go to Cross Tabs. Um, I've already selected rows or home for um, the first rater and then the second rater here. And then you would go to statistics. And if you recall, for chi-square statistic, you would find that in this section as well. It's right up here. But we're going to click Cohen's kappa instead. And then we're going to click continue. And then OK. And then SPSS is going to spit out the summary table. So um, it's going to spit out a cross tabs table here. Of um, It's a basically a two by two table. And you'll see where uh, one rater rated um, one rating versus another, and you'll see the kappa value here. So for interclass coefficient, um, we're going to do this analysis based on this variable here. And as you can see, they're fairly inconsistent, um, but I'm going to run it for both um, absolute agreement and consistency, and then we'll uh, kind of discuss the difference between the two. So um, to find where that analysis is, you would go to uh, an analyze, scale, and then reliability analysis. Plug the two variables that you want in here, go to statistics, and then you would click interclass um, correlation coefficient. And um, there's an article that I've linked below. So the model, the type of model that you would choose depends on if it's a sample versus population and how consistent the raters are. So I'm gonna pick two-way random and I'm gonna run it for absolute agreement and then we'll kind of see the differences. I'm gonna click continue. Then I'm gonna click okay. And then scroll down and as you can see um, there's a negative coefficient here and then I'm going to run it again for um, consistency liability analysis but instead switch it to consistency click OK and then click enter As you can see, it's uh, a little bit better, but 
still worse. <laughs> um, so uh, this is the value for our interclass uh, coefficient. And how we can analyze this, there's no agreement between the two. There's also no consistency between the two raters. So I've gone ahead and actually changed the different options here. Um, but before, I think there was only three options, but I've changed it to five. And I've also changed the raters ratings uh, here. So it provides a little bit of um, everything from each of the options that were available. I'm using SPSS27. Uh, so um, with this version, you don't have to manually weight uh, the ratings. Um, you could just go ahead and do a weighted kappa from here. And so if you go to uh, scale and then you click on weighted uh, kappa, you choose whichever option uh, where the rate, the variables that have the ratings in them. And then choose the relevant criteria here. Um, linear weight speaks to when the difference between the first and the second is equally as important as the difference between the second and the third. And I, and I believe quadratic is um, when the difference between the first and the second is less important than the difference between the second and the third. Um, I think I have that correct. If I don't, there will be a pop-up thing that, that explains it a lot better. Um, so for this one, it's uh, linear weight. Um, and I'm going to click continue. So I've already ran these. I've ran um, both the linear and the quadratic so that you can um, see the difference. Um, somewhat of a difference, actually. So I'm going to go to the output table. And then this is the um, with the linear weight calculation. And then this is with the quadratic weight calculation. And then if you uh, would recall, cap is from 0 to 1 and one being um, perfect agreement. And so these are both uh, pretty close. Okay, and so that's it for me. Um, if you guys have any questions, please put it down in the uh, comment box below. I will try and get back to you um, in a timely manner. If I do not know the answer, I'll let you know that I do not know, or I will point you to some helpful resources.